Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Terry Shoemaker with the Pacific Northwest National Laboratory, and I'd like to welcome you to today's webcast, the L Prize winning LED A19 60 watt replacement. What commercial building owners slash operators can expect in 2012? Today's webcast is brought to you by the U.S. Department of Energy Solid State Lighting Program. We're very happy today to have our speakers as Todd Manigold of Phillips Lighting and Kelly Gordon of the Pacific Northwest National Laboratory. At this point, I will turn this over to Kelly Gordon. Thank you. Thank you very much, Terry. I'm Kelly Gordon, and I've been with PNNL for about 11 years. I am a program manager here supporting DOE's Solid State Lighting Program, and I've been involved with the L Prize contest throughout its development and implementation. I'm joined today by Todd Manigold, who is the Director of LED Lamps Marketing North America for Philips Lighting. He joined Philips in 2008 and is currently responsible for managing the growing portfolio of LED retrofit lamps. I want to welcome everyone who has dialed into the webinar today, and thank you very much for your patience as we get up and running. Um, this webinar was targeted to especially to the commercial building sector, and we got a very good response. Um, there are several uh, categories of participants that I'd just like to recognize and welcome. Uh, first of all, members of DOE's Commercial Building Energy Alliances uh, would like to, uh, were, were participating in the webinar and very much like to welcome CBA members, um, partners of the, the DOE Federal Energy Management Program, or FEMP, um, as well as General Services Administration uh, building owners and operators. We all have also have strong participation from electric utilities and energy efficiency organizations that implement uh, a range of energy efficiency programs, um, lighting manufacturers, lighting distributors, and other professionals from the lighting, energy efficiency, and building management professions. I'd also especially like to uh, recognize our L Prize partners. These are 31 um, utilities and energy efficiency organizations across the country that have signed a memorandum of understanding with the Department of Energy specifically to uh, support and provide feedback to the L Prize program. These partners have been fundamental in helping to shape the, the L Prize contest and to evaluate um, the entry that we're going to be talking about today. So thank you very much to our partners. So today, these are the topics that we're going to cover. First, I'm going to provide an overview of the current levels of performance that we see in LED uh, A19 60-watt replacement lamps. Then we'll look at the LPRIZE performance requirements and the testing that we, that we applied to the LPRIZE entry. And included in that, I'll address the, the role of the partners in field assessments and in their uh, looking forward to promotion of winning products. Then I'll be turning it over to Todd Manigold, who will give us the update directly from Philips on the market rollout of this new product, looking specifically at target applications and fixture types and tools to gauge the cost effectiveness of the product. Now, first of all, why are 60-watt bulbs so important? I mean, this is the, the light bulb that typically when you think of a light bulb or when the light bulb goes off in your head, this is the one that it is. It is a 60-watt E19, sometimes we call it an omnidirectional light bulb or lamp, uh, basically emits light in all directions. Certainly the most common household bulb, we all have these in our homes, um, but also used in a range of different commercial applications. We see them commonly in hotels, restaurants, uh, retail, uh, showrooms, healthcare, uh, assisted living, higher education, um, anywhere where you would have um, a need for uh, dimming capability, you might see this type of, of lamp, uh, table and floor lamps, pendants, wall sconces, a range of different fixture types that um, this uh, light source continues to be very common in. Now there are energy efficient alternatives, an increasing number of energy efficient alternatives to the traditional incandescent lamp. We have uh, halogen lamps that are marginally more efficient, marginally more expensive than uh, the, the basic incandescent. Uh, halogen improves the um, efficacy of light output in, in a very similarly shaped um, light bulb package. Uh, they last a little bit longer typically than, than traditional incandescent. 
Um, of course, we have compact fluorescent lamps, CFL, the technology that has been around for some time, really has matured, and it is a very cost-effective, very energy-efficient technology. They last uh, 8 to 10,000 hours, so 10 times longer than an incandescent. Uh, there are some issues with, with compact fluorescents. Um, there, there's sometimes a run-up time before they come up to full brightness. There can be issues with dimming compatibility and color quality. And then, of course, we have a growing number of LED replacement lamp products. Um, and, and there are some very good products in the LED category. What we certainly can say is that not all LED products are created equal. There is uh, pretty variable performance uh, when you look across different products in terms of the light output, color issues, dimming issues. And so um, it, it takes some research to find the products that you that will meet the needs of the application. So how do we get our heads around what is available out there in terms of LED replacement lamp products today? There are a couple of sources that I've looked at and, and wanted to share with you here. Uh, one is the uh, DOE LED Lighting Facts program. And if you haven't visited this site yet, I would encourage you to do so. It's lightingfacts.com. When you go there, you will see a listing of now more than 4,000 products. These are all LED replacement lamps and complete fixtures or luminaires that have been listed by the Lighting Facts program. Well, what does it mean to be listed? You don't have to meet any specific performance requirements, but what you do have to do is to back up your performance claims with a test report. You need to have actual testing from um, an accredited independent laboratory that, uh, that verifies your performance. So what I've done is pulled all of, all of the products that are currently listed on Lighting Facts in this omnidirectional lamp category. So uh, light bulbs, screw-in replacement light bulbs that emit light in all directions. This graph shows us the output, light output in lumens on the vertical axis and efficacy in lumens per watt on the horizontal. So you see the, the scattering of blue dots there. That's all the, the products that are listed there. It's 150-some. Um, and they certainly range in both output and efficacy. The L Prize winner there is above 90 lumens per watt, very efficacious, and more than 900 lumens. So how does this compare to to incandescent? Um, since most of us still think in that incandescent watt, it will a 40 watt incandescent light bulb is around 400 lumens. A 60 watt would be more like 800, um, 75 watt above 1,000. So you see that the L Prize uh, product is is in between a 60 watt and a 75 watt, and the vast majority of those existing LED replacement lamps are below a 60 watt output. Many of them are below 40 watt. Another very important consideration with replacement light bulbs is how does it look? How, do, how does it do on color? Uh, so we look at, at correlated color temperature, or CCT. Uh, that's the color appearance. When you look at the light bulb or look at the light coming out of it, it should be white. Well, there's different shades of white, as we all know. Some, some whites are a little more to the yellow or the warm colors, amber colors, um, and some are more towards the blue end of the scale, what we would call kind of a cool white. Um, so we look at it on that scale. The lower numbers on that CCT scale are the warmer color appearance. And then on the other axis there, you have color rendering index, or CRI. That is an indication of how do things look when they are illuminated by this light source. Do the colors look right? And that is um, out of a, a scale out of 100, with 100 being either uh, daylight, sunlight, or an incandescent light source is, by definition, 100. So you can see that the LPRIZE product is above 90 CRI. That's very good. And it has a warm color temperature between 2,700 and 3,000 Kelvin. OK, so that was the Lighting Facts listed products. Another good place to look is the Energy Star Qualified 
products list, the Energy Star program does have a qualification for LED uh, replacement lamps. There are currently more than 400 total products that have been qualified. Most of those are what we would call directional light sources, so it's a, it's a flood lamp or a reflector lamp, that type. Um, when I checked the list last week, there were fewer than 20 that were this A-type or omnidirectional lamps, and of those, less than half were 60-watt um, replacements, so meaning that they have at least 800 lumens um, light output. <coughs> In this next chart, I provided a, a comparison of the Energy Star requirements and the L-Prize requirements. And I'm not going to go through this line by line, but the, the main point here is that the L-Prize requirements were set at a higher level than Energy Star. And that, that's intentional. Energy Star is, it, it sets kind of minimum performance levels for good, energy efficient, quality products. The L Prize served a different function, which was to provide a stretch goal for the industry to say, if we push this technology, can we get very high efficacy and exceptional performance on those quality metrics, light output, color quality, uniformity, et cetera. So in, in each of those cases, uh, on the basic performance metrics, the L Prize requirements were higher. So the L Prize contest, uh, Philips Lighting submitted 2,000 samples, and many of you may have seen this picture um, at the time when, in the press when the when the entry first came in in September 2009. Um, they sent 2,000 samples of that product to DOE. And uh, those were immediately set, sent off for photometric testing by qualified testing laboratories using the industry standard test procedure, LM79. There were 200 samples that were tested at that time. And the table here provides you, um, for comparison, the L-Prize requirement and then what was the result for the Philips product. Um, and that, that those numbers are averages for the 200. Uh, unit. So they were able to exceed each of the basic requirements of the contest according to the short-term testing. But that was not all. We, we immediately moved those same 200 uh, products into long-term lumen maintenance testing. We wanted to see how long do they last and how long do they last under um, an elevated temperature environment. So they were tested at 45 degrees Celsius, that's 113 degrees Fahrenheit, um, in this apparatus that is shown there in the photo. Um, it's basically a large box that, that holds it at a certain temperature. The lamps operate continuously. That's an integrating sphere, the measurement device underneath, and it moves automatically on a track and takes uh, periodic measurements of each lamp. So the minimum test period that we established for the contest was 7, 000, uh, was the maximum output point of the lamps plus 5,000 hours. Uh, 7,000 hours of continuous runtime later was when we evaluated um, when we evaluated the performance. Um, and, and we are continuing to run these lamps at this time. They've now clocked more than 12,000 hours. So the the results are given there below. The L Prize requirement for lumen maintenance was. Um, the, the projection for 25,000 hours has to be at least 70% of the initial light output. Uh, the Phillips result based on those 7,000 hours of data that we collected uh, was that the projection would be 99.3% at 25,000 hours, so much higher than the requirement. Uh, we also looked at color maintenance because we want to make sure that the color is not going to shift over time, we don't want it to get pinker as time goes on, or greener, or more purple. Um, and so we want to make sure that it stays a white light source. And um, the, the performance of the Philips product was well within the requirement for that color maintenance over time. So that was the long-term testing. We also conducted stress testing on the products to see how it would do under relatively extreme conditions. Um, this is about uh, giving some assessment of the durability of the product. So there were a number of, of stressors applied to the products uh, simultaneously. There was high and low temperature cycling. That's going from 
from temperature extremes, from very low temperatures to very high temperatures. Um, the, the picture that you see there shows the lamps mounted on a on a tabletop. This thing can tilt and shake and apply um, um, quite strong vibration uh, G forces to the to the products. Uh, we also subjected them to power waveform distortions, um, so so different power quality aspects that, that they may have to endure, um, and rapid cycling, rapid on off cycling. Um, the, the Philips products that were tested there, about 15 there in the, in the test sample, um, there were no failures among those products. Uh, as a benchmark, we also included um, high quality CFLs in this test, uh, and all of the CFL benchmarks failed uh, over the course of the testing at, at different levels of stress, um, but none of the, the Philips products failed. Now this is where our partners come in, field assessments. Uh, 14 of the 31 LPRIZE partner organizations, again utilities and energy efficiency sponsor organizations, uh, conducted field assessments. <clears throat> and this was a great role for them. They know their customers, they know their customer facilities, and they were uh, able to identify uh, various locations in which to locate these uh, Philips LPRIZE candidate lamps. So we ended up having more than 1,300 lamps that were installed out in the field, 40 different locations. And they really range, commercial offices, retail, institutional healthcare, uh, hospitality, and uh, residential applications. And the whole purpose of these field assessments was to look at energy use, verify the, the energy performance and the lighting system performance. Um, sometimes things are different when you go to put it in in the field um, on existing circuits and with existing systems. We wanted to see how it did. Uh, reliability in the field, customer acceptance, and the opportunities for future cost-effective deployment of these products as an energy-saving measure. So those field assessments were uh, completed in the summer and fall of 2010, and uh, various site measurements were taken by the LPRIZE partners. So some of them did a luminance measurement, so measuring the light output on the surface um, compared to what was in there before. Um, they also requested feedback from the users and the occupants of the spaces to see how they liked it. Um, and in some cases did power measurements and, and a variety of other indicators. Um, just some of the, the results of the uh, feedback from users. Would you recommend this type of lighting to others? Uh, three quarters of the respondents said yes. And I should say the number of respondents was around 1,000 to 1,200, uh, depending on the question. Um, is the light too dim, too bright, just right? Uh, two thirds of them said it was just right. Uh, similarly, on the issue of is, is the color good? Is it too cool or blue? Is it too warm or yellow? Uh, two thirds said just right. So on all of the requirements of the LPRIZE 60 watt replacement category, uh, the Philips product did meet those requirements in terms of light output, efficacy, color characteristics, life, um, as well as the stress and field assessment uh, tests. And the award was made to Philips in August of 2011. There was an award ceremony. On Capitol Hill, Senators Murkowski and Bingaman of the Senate Energy Committee were uh, in attendance at that, at that ceremony, as well as the representatives from Phillips, DOE, and the LPRIZE partners. And so now that brings us to today, when the winning product is going to be coming to market very, very soon. Um, now you see here the, the photo of the uh, production ready. Uh, version of the product. It's been streamlined and uh, looks ready for, for prime time. Uh, we've been continuing to, to communicate very closely with the LPRIZE partners on um, how this product will work into their energy efficiency programs. Um, and that's uh, incentives are an important part of those programs, but also cooperative marketing with retailers, promotions to their customers, direct contact with the uh, commercial and residential sectors in their territory. This map has, has what we're aware of now, and I know there are already a few more uh, that we've learned about in the last couple of days, 
Uh, so, so look at your area of the country and uh, your your state, your local territory, and and see what might be available. And there should be a growing number of them soon. At this point, I am going to turn it over to Todd Manigold of Philips, who is going to tell us more about this exciting product. Todd. Thank you very much, Kelly. Uh, thank you, everyone, for uh, spending a little bit of your afternoon with us. Uh, we're very excited to introduce the El Prize award-winning light bulb, uh, which is the most efficient 60-watt bulb you can purchase. So uh, we'd like to go through a little bit of the performance of this specific product and highlight where it makes sense. So um, in terms of the performance of the product, the product has 940 lumens, which is 17% more light than other LED 60-watt equivalents that are on the market today. It has longer life, and it, ha it has longer life, and it consumes less energy. So this product actually only consumes about 10 watts, which compared to the traditional 60-watt incandescent lamp is an 83% energy savings. Um, and this particular product was designed for the applications in the United States and will be assembled in the United States. So not only does it have more light, consume less energy, and have longer life, it's a high-quality product that delivers lighting without compromise. So in addition to the features we've already mentioned, it has, and this is something that Kelly referenced previously, it remains the same color of light over the lifetime. And it also has a very high CRI content, which will actually bring colors uh, and make them show up more vivid. And we'll talk about why that's important in the applications in the slides to come. Uh, from an environmental perspective, it contains no mercury, which is a feature of most LEDs. And it also has a 360-degree light distribution, giving an effect that people are used to when they're using typical incandescent lamps today. So where are, where are these lamps used? They're used basically everywhere. And this is something, again, that Kelly referenced earlier. They're used in hotels and restaurants and retail and government, education and commercial facilities. And the number of attendees that are on the phone today, we would argue that pretty much every one of your buildings would have one of these lamps in it in some location. Now, each of these particular segments has different requirements. In a hotel, uh, ambiance is important, so the ability to have the, the light bulb be dimmable and create a warm color temperature and a high CRI create an atmosphere that people are used to and comfortable with. In retail, it's about image and presentation. Again, the features of, of having a high CRI make the colors vivid, and it's, it's an energy-efficient product, meaning the stores can actually save money in operations. From a government and education perspective, the energy efficiency and a long life make it a maintenance savings for everyone. And similarly for commercial applications, the functionality of this product, meaning it's dimmable as well as energy efficient, make it a, a viable application for such uses. But within these spaces, there's lots of different applications where the product could be used. And we have a comprehensive list of applications on this particular slide. But we've tried to highlight the areas that we think are the sweet spots for this particular product. And it's the, it's the products, it, it's the spaces where the product is on all the time. So if you look in a reception area or a common space in a lobby, those are places where lighting is on 24-7 and it's very diff difficult to interrupt the space. Similarly with an elevator, it's a, it's a space that's constantly used and the ability to actually go, undergo maintenance in a space like that can be difficult. Um, and at the bottom, you actually see refrigeration and kitchens. Um, this is a place where uh, CFLs have struggled. The cold environments are, are a perfect place for the LED to be used and to minimize the amount of maintenance that might be associated with other technologies. So what do I need to look for? Well, if, if you have fixtures that might look like some of these particular products, these would be appropriate uses for the L Prize bulb whether it's a downlight or a wall sconce or a table lamp, all of these are places where we have found applications for the L Prize bulb. And so what we'd like to do for the, for the next coming slides is actually walk you through some of the test installations that were done previously and show you the economic savings that could be, could be um, delivered with this particular product. So in a hotel or common space, this particular product replaced a 67 watt lamp, and you actually see over that particular test period 
the savings that were realized and that the payback can be less than a year. Um, similarly, in a different comment space, you actually see that the payback is slightly over two years, and this is compared against the CFL. So that we've seen that people have questions about whether or not LEDs are ready to replace not only incandescent but CFLs, and in the right application, it's absolutely true that this, this product could be a viable substitute and deliver financial savings for the user. In the next slide, we talked about cold spaces earlier, and this is, a t this is an enclosed fixture that may not be appropriate for every space, but in a, in a refrigerator or a freezer application, it's a perfectly suitable application for this particular lamp, and when compared to a 100-watt lamp in this particular case, you see a very fast payback. And in this particular case, it's not something that's used 24-7. It's used about 12 hours a day, which is the working period of this particular application, and you still receive a very viable financial benefit. In Kelly's slides, we actually referenced uh, this particular setting, which was a merchandise mart in Chicago. So in this particular case, uh, energy savings is critical because it's a space that uh, is quite large and any savings can contribute to the bottom line. However, it's also a space where image and representation is actually quite important. So not only did this product deliver on both, um, it actually, they actually took it one step further. So in, in scenario one on the top of this slide, you actually see a one-for-one -one replacement where the payback was slightly over a year. However, in scenario two, because of the light output of this particular product, they were actually able to reduce the number of lamps per fixture and still deliver what people call just the just right amount of light. And in this particular case, the payback becomes a no-brainer for people because it's less than one year. As we move forward, there are applications where energy savings is not the most paramount aspect of a setting. So in a museum, the display and the, and the pr presentation of what is on display is crucial. In this particular case, the features of the L-Prize and the CRI and the ability to deliver light and color the way it's supposed to be perceived is critical. In this particular case, the L-Prize was perceived as a success, but you can see here the payback wasn't quite the same as some of the other applications that had been much longer um, times of use in maybe 24-7 operations. This is a place where it's used selectively, but we wanted to point out that there are multiple reasons to use the L-Prize, energy savings being a very big piece of it, but the, the high quality light is actually critical for some applications, and it is a viable solution for those as well. So we've gone through a couple of calculations for you, and we, we wanted to highlight what this particular product does. It's a high quality product that delivers light that's basically unparalleled to people in the sense that it gives more lumens, longer life, and less energy than any other product on the market. Um, it provides a very sustainable solution for people who are looking to achieve um, such goals in their, their particular operations. The product will be available in February 2012. If you actually contact your local distributor, they have, been, they have been given the information to take orders for this particular product. And once again, for those who are with the government, this product will be assembled in the United States and qualify for such programs. At the, at the bottom of the page, we have actually provided two links for you. Um, the first link is a, a link providing you updates on the L-Prize and its status and availability. For those who are interested, please sign up. And the second link is actually a calculator, so you can do your own calculations and determine how this particular product could be used and the financial benefit that it would give your particular organization. So with that, we conclude our particular presentation, and we would be open for further questions. Okay, great. Thank you very much, Todd. This is Kelly Gordon again, and I will just go back to my slide set again to give you another potential resource for questions. So in addition to the links that Todd has provided that take you directly to Philips resources, if you have additional questions about the L Prize that you would like to pose to, to us, to the DOE team, this is the, the email address of um, where you can send questions in. Um, I believe we have a number of questions that have come in um, online, and so I'm going to, to start working through those in the time that we have remaining. I will answer the questions that I can answer and send some over to Todd as well. 
there were several questions that were about the, the testing. Uh, why was the test temperature so high? And that, that is a very good question because often you see lighting products are rated um, for light output and other characteristics at 25C or basic room temperature. Um, we decided to test it at a higher temperature because um, in some of the fixture types where your basic 60-watt uh, incandescent lamps are used, it can actually get very hot in those fixtures. If it's a totally enclosed fixture, if it's a recessed downlight that's in an insulated ceiling, for example, and we've seen this in the past with CFLs, uh, you have basically anything that has electronics can get cooked if it's too hot um, in the fixture. And so we wanted to put it through its paces in an elevated uh, temperature, and, and 45C is, is what has been um, measured in certain fixture types. Uh, were there any failures of the 200 that were tested? This is, I assume, with regard to the <coughs> long-term limit maintenance testing. Um, no, and those lamps continue to operate uh, and have accumulated more than 12,000 hours of operation now. Uh, we will be publishing more details on the results of the lumen maintenance testing uh, in the next month or so, incorporating that more recent data. Um, okay, this may be a question for you, Todd. Is there a disposal cost or is the product recyclable? So this particular product actually uh, does not contain mercury, which is a common concern uh, of the CFL of the CFL products, and so it would have uh, it would not have the disposal cost associated with the hazardous waste um, of typical CFLs today. Um, the next question is why were the color temperatures limited to 2,700 to 3,000 K? That those values are what was put into the legislation that established the L-Prize contest. This was part of the Energy Independence and Security Act of 2007, um, and, and those values were specified there. The intent of that um, was to provide a light source that is very comparable to the 60-watt incandescent, and uh, those are, are warm white products. Um, and as we know with LEDs, um, many of the early LED products were very high color temperature, very cool white, very blue, um, and that may be fine for some applications, um, probably not as much for the type of residential or residential style fixtures where we would most commonly use these light bulbs, so that's why it was restricted to warm white. Uh, that relates to the next question, what are CR CCT and CRI of the typical 60 watt incandescent? Incandescent is usually about 2,700K, um, and CRI, by definition, is 100 or close to 100. It, it is the reference source. Um, okay, uh, the next question, at what ambient temperature was the 910 lumens at 9.7 watts measured? Uh, so that was the, uh, the initial photometric uh, measurements. Uh, those are done according to the LN79 test procedure. That is done at 25 degrees C, room temperature. And then how is the light output affected by temperature? So the, the testing that has been going on in the, in the lumen maintenance test apparatus, again, that's at 45 C, and the light output relative to the, what was measured in the LM79 testing has remained the same or gone up. Now we do see if the temperature goes down, output goes up. There is under, LEDs like the colder temperatures, so light output will go, will go up somewhat with uh, colder temperatures. Would you have anything to add to that question, Todd? Um. I don't think so. I think you mentioned that uh, previously, basically, that the, the 2700 Kelvin temperature was the appropriate place because it most closely replicated um, what an incandescent lamp is producing today. Right, right. Okay, uh, question about the competition. Have other manufacturers submitted products for L-Prize testing? Uh, no, the, the uh, Philips entry was the, the first um, and um, uh, to date, only entry in the competition. 
there may be future categories in the in the uh, L Prize contest, um, but at, at this point, um, the the 60 watt category is the only category in which um, an entry has been received and an award made. Okay. Um, let's see. Additional questions. Um, what does qualified mean? What criteria? I'm not sure if I know which what that means. Oh, qualified for might be for um, for Lighting Facts or for Energy Star. Qualified for, for Energy Star means that it has met all the requirements of the Energy Star program and those have been verified. Qualified for Lighting Facts, again, means that it has a test report that uh, that backs up the product performance claim. Um, questions about the field assessments. Did the field assessments include performance with various dimmers? And dimming controllers. Yes, there were uh, dimming applications that were undertaken in the field assessments, and this was um, actually a, a, a really useful area of feedback from the field assessment partners. Uh, they were able to identify issues with dimming. In some cases, there were problems with with the dimming performance and with the uh, particularly the color of the lamp under dimming. Uh, that feedback was provided back to Philips and. Uh, the dimming circuitry improved in in the uh, production version of the lamp. Now, several of the partners that undertook those field assessments have now seen the production version of the lamp um, and have assessed its dimming performance and uh, indicated that it is greatly improved. Um, okay, so the uh, question for you, Todd, on Energy Star: What is the status of the Energy Star? Uh, label on this L prize bulb. Yeah, so the the product is actually uh, undergoing further testing with Energy Star. The product will have Energy Star status in the second quarter. Um, do you want me to go through the rest of these questions, Kelly? Um, sure. Do you want to take the next one? Yeah, sure. Um, there's there's several questions here on uh, related to the same topic about retail pricing. Uh, the MSRP for the for the L prize is, is slated at fifty dollars. Um, that particular price will be will be will vary from region to region depending on the level of subsidy associated with particular utilities. And as you can see, as we presented earlier, there are many utilities who are contributing to this product. And as it as it begins its national rollout, uh, we anticipate and do expect more and more utilities to come on board. Um, it's hard to give a, a firm number because the utility numbers actually vary quite significantly from region to region, um, particularly as you have different utility rates in those particular areas. Um, okay. Let's see. Those are most of the questions right there, Kelly. Hey, there was a there is a question about the. Uh, Time periods beyond 7,000 hours. Uh, is Philips planning to publish testing for time periods beyond 7,000 hours? Can you answer that, John? Most of the testing for this particular product is being in con done in conjunction with you and the DOE. So I, I think we would we would jointly make those data those pieces of data available when they're when they're actually completed. Right, and as I as I mentioned, we are. Um, Planning to publish a, um, a paper on the results of the lumen maintenance testing. It will provide more detail on uh, the overall approach to lumen maintenance testing used in the L Prize and the, the results to date and how that data was used to make a projection. So that will be coming out in the next couple of months. Uh, there's also another question Is there a national stock number being assigned to this product? That's a question for you, Todd. I'm actually not 100% uh, familiar with that particular term. Uh, and the um, the distributors who support Philips product will have will have their numbers associated with it, and our particular product number is in the process of being set up with all of those particular people. So. Right, and the, and the link that Todd provided at the end of his slides um, uh, will get you to the to the uh, network of of Philips uh, distributors. You can find more information there. Um, a couple more questions have have come in. We have a few more minutes. Um, 
there was a question about the appearance of, of the lamp. Along the same lines that consumers have thought that CFLs look strange, has there been any testing or is there any data about what consumers think of the LED A19 bulb when it's unlit, for example, in its packaging? That's a very good question because, of course, this product uh, has a, a yellow appearance. It doesn't, it doesn't look white when it's not lit. Um, and, and I've seen on um, some of the Philips packages of, of the earlier uh, related product, the Ambient LED that you may have seen in, in some of the retail stores, um, that there is an indication on it that says it's white when it's lit so that you don't uh, think that, that the yellow is what it's going to be. So that certainly is something different. Um, and, and we have not collected any, any data about um, consumer preferences in this area. Has, has Philips done any of that work, Todd? Um, we, certainly, we certainly make it abundantly clear to people that uh, it, it is a white light that is produced from this particular product. And in consumer testing uh, that we've done, uh, not only in the United States but globally, it is not an overwhelming deterrent for people to try the product, and the best way to actually demonstrate the product is when it's on, um, and that's what we would hope and expect people to actually do with the product. Right. So I would say, you know, along with the the increasing variety of energy efficient light sources that we have, there is going to be variation in in how they look, um, and and it will give people. Uh, perhaps more choices, and some people may like it and some may not, but hopefully they will have choices that where they will find something that they do like. Another question was, at how many hours is the lamp expected to hit L70 or hit that 70% of initial light output? Now, we don't know for sure. Um, there are There is an industry standard method now for projecting light. So, so basically, you take the data that you've collected in the first 6,000 hours or 10,000 hours or however much time you have, um, but at least 6,000 hours, and you, you use that data to project out to the 25,000 hour period. Now, as, as indicated, the, prod the Philips products that were submitted to the L Prize and that we tested and have continued to test, um, when we applied that projection out to 25,000 hours, it was still at 99% above 99% lumen maintenance. Now, I did notice in your materials, Todd, that, that Phillips has, has um, adjusted the rating to 30,000 hours from 25,000. Correct. Um, can you say a few words about that? Yeah, I mean, based on the testing that's been done um, by the DOE and our testing internally of our product, we're confident that this product could last for 30,000 hours. That's and that's and why that means above 70%. Yes, absolutely. And, um, and that's why the, the lifetime has been extended for the commercial product that will be released. Okay, Todd, do you see the next few questions in front of you? Could yes, you yes, I do. Okay. Uh, and there's some questions about uh, downlights and heat transfer. Um, I Certainly, um, not every application is always appropriate. If it's a very tight downlight, um, that could be, and there's a lot of heat trapped in that particular area, it could compromise the life of the particular product. So we would certainly ask that people um, inspect the application before just putting it at any place. But if, assuming there's space in there and, and um, the ability to have air movement in that particular space, it would be an appropriate application for this lamp. Um, we would not recommend it be used in a completely enclosed fixture at ambient temperatures. However, we actually did uh, show an application where it was enclosed in a freezer type application, which may be more appropriate. Um, let's see. Um, so there's some questions about dimming. Um, this particular product actually has a wide range of dimming compatibility. Um, as all LEDs, there it's always um, needs to be tested in what actually the load can be actually accommodated for a particular dimming system. So it's hard to, to give a specific answer to that particular question. Uh, so there, there is a question here about omnidirectional light and how that compares to the incandescent light bulb. Uh, this product um, was in particular designed to replicate the light that people are used to with an incandescent product. So that's not only the quality of light, the color of light, but it's also the delivery of light. In this particular case, replicating the omnidirectional nature of an incandescent light bulb. So our, our answer to that question would be yes, it does. Right, and, I, and I'll just chime in to say that um, 
uh, we have published in some of our materials an overlay of the, the distribution of, of this lamp compared to an incandescent lamp, and it matches almost uh, identically. It's, and that it was very much um, intentional. It was um, it was intended to be uh, a very similar distribution to an incandescent. So there's, we just got a couple more questions in here, Kelly. I'm just going to jump to those. Okay. Um, um, so questions about the L prize. The L prize is denoted as we um, as we mentioned earlier by its its yellow caps. It's also by its white housing. Um, and it's it's very in a unique look. That's how you would actually note that it actually is the L prize, um, and it's with its particular three chambers. Um, the, U, the bulbs will be UL listed. Um, the product will not be available in a GU24 base. It will be only available in the E26 base. Um, the product will be available in Canada. Um, and I guess the other questions are for you, Kelly. Okay, great. Uh, there was a question, would this product qualify for ARA funds? I believe it needs to have 51% or more made in the USA. I believe it would because yes. the, the U.S. It, content requirements uh, were pretty stringent for the yes. self Yes, it will. Okay, Todd is confirming yes. Um, has the technology improved since the L-Price samples were submitted? Will the product have the exact same specs as the samples? So, so yes, the technology, LED technology, has continued to improve, and that's, that's the reason that you see that, that difference in the production version of the lamp where the, the original, um, it wasn't a prototype, but it was a pre-production model, had four sections, and now they've gone to three sections. That's because the LEDs have continued to get more efficacious. You can get more light out of them for, for, the, same, um, for the same space. So, so they were able to uh, streamline that design. Uh, yeah, and on that note, Kelly, I mean, the, the, the initial samples that were tested had about 910 lumens, as you mentioned and the commercialized products will not have 940. So um, the, the technology has improved, and that's been incorporated into the commercialized version of the L-Prize. Any deviation from the, from the L-Prize specs would be in the right direction. They, they will not be below no. the L-Prize requirement. Everything will be at, at or exceeded, as we talked about, both from a light level and even from a lifetime perspective. Okay, here's a question. Since these are standard Edison base, how can designers use this product in initial building designs to meet IECC model energy code? Watts per square foot requirements is IECC. Um, I have to use the max wattage for the fixture. That's, that's, that's a good question, and that is something that would face any uh, screw-in replacement lamp. Um, and, and you have indicated already, Todd, that it's not going to be in a GU24 base. Correct. Uh, but this, it really is targeted as a screw-in replacement. Yes. That's what it's designed for. Uh, there's one last question here about um, the comparison that was given from an economic perspective um, where we made a comparison to the 32-watt CFL uh, and the light output from, from that versus the L-Prize. And in this particular case, um, you know, the, the L-Prize actually provided sufficient light output to replicate what people were actually used to. And um, I don't have the exact foot candle measurements of that at my fingertips, but the way that we would measure that is whether the, per the perceived nature of the application was was impacted in any way, and actually people, the positive feedback from the, uh, from the respondents that Kelly mentioned would suggest that the product actually delivered what it was supposed to, if not exceeded. Another question it, uh, or a comment, it would be worth noting the extra energy savings from not having to expel energy from refrigerators and freezers. So I assume that means that not having to expel the heat or offset the heat from incandescent lamps, that's certainly true. Um, any problems with uh, bulbs snatching these valuable bulbs? That's, that's something that, that we discussed uh, with the partners during the field assessments. That, that, that was a concern that in some cases, um, you know, something that looks different, especially if people know that it is it is worth more, um, that could be a concern in more public type spaces or say in hotel rooms, uh, that, that sector. Um, and we did look into a number of different uh, socket locking options and there there are some that are that are available on the market that are 
uh, relatively inexpensive. That that would, um, I guess, be something that that people should should consider. Okay, I'm going to go to a few more questions. Uh, we can run. A, we're going to run maybe just a little bit over um, the the hour, given that we had a somewhat late start. Um, and uh, I certainly understand if, if some people need to need to um, sign off, but we will continue to answer a few questions here. Uh, let me just read the next one. What were the program requirements regarding acceptable changes between the LPRIZE lamp tested during the competition and the LPRIZE lamp that's actually introduced to the market? It looks different on the outside, must be different on the inside, since it's now dimmable to 10%. Um, so, so that I think we really addressed uh, earlier that it, that it has to do with the, the continued improvement of LED technology. Um, there is in the in the LPRIZE contest, the evaluation process, there is a change control policy. So, in the development of any uh, manufactured product, there are changes in design along the way as you move from from prototype into uh, actual production. That was planned for um, the manufacturer is required to submit those um, changes, notification of any changes to uh, to DOE so that it can be reviewed by the technical review committee uh, to ensure that it does not negatively affect the performance of the product. As long as it is performing at or above the requirements, um, then it is fine. And that that process was very much something that was. Um, applied to evaluation of the Phillips lamp. Will future life projections be made using IES TM21? That is the, um, the industry standard method that's now available just as of last year. Um, at the time that the LPRIZE rules were developed, TM21 was not yet available. Um, and so we, we used a, a uh, non-parametric statistical approach to assessing the data that we collected over that 7,000 hour uh, period and, and fitting an, uh, an exponential decay curve um, out to 25,000 hours to make our projection. Uh, now that, IS, uh, that the IES uh, method is available, TM21, that in the future is what would be used in the Enterprise. Um, okay, Todd, would you like to take those last few questions? There's a couple of last questions here, and then I guess we'll probably close things up, right, Kelly? Yes, that's right. Um, there's a comparison about how does it, how does this particular product compare to other commercially available LED product products, probably specifically the bulbs that are available. Um, the bulbs that are available commercially, um, professionally, and um, in retail stores are designed to meet Energy Star specifications. Uh, the L prize was designed to meet the L prize specifications, which, um, as Kelly highlighted, were much more stringent, and actually took lighting and set a new standard. And so, when we claim that this is the most efficient product that's available, that is because the L prize set those particular specifications. Kelly, would you like to add anything to that? No, I think you answered it. Um, Questions about future wattages, uh, we are working towards those particular lamp types, um, and they'll be available down the road as LEDs permit. Um, and then uh, in terms of the sales channels, this product we do anticipate to be available uh, in the professional channel uh, in February and probably likely in the retail there, uh, market shortly thereafter. And um, yeah, so we would very much thank you for your time. And um, if we have any other future questions, um, please reach out to the local Phillips representative in your region. Uh, they can help you address questions about availability and distribution and, and those types of questions. Yes, thank you very much, Todd. And thank you to, to everyone who participated with us today. Um, again, use the, the um, resources that we've provided and the links that we've provided to do follow-up questions. We have captured all of the questions that have come in electronically, and we will do our best to address those questions um, online at, at the time that we post the complete webinar. Thank you very much.